We're back with another episode of the PTI Nice Daily Show. My name is Alan. Happy Monday morning. Let's start off by getting to know a little bit more about Jane. Jane is an all-in-one practice management software, so much more than just a standard EMR. So if you're looking for online practice management software to help you grow and manage your business, Jane could be a great fit for you. Lots of cool features, online booking and scheduling, telehealth inside of Jane, uh, charting and including now billing for insurance in addition to cash-based practices, not to mention free data transfers and unlimited customer support and demo. Jane has got the goods for you. If you want to learn more about Jane, watch some videos, book a demo with the demo team, you can head on over to jane.app slash physical therapy and from there sign up for a free demo or talk through questions you may have with Jane's customer support team. When you feel comfortable making the transition from whatever software you're currently using to Jane, you can use ISIS promotion code ICEPT1MO for a one month free grace period to help you in your transition to Jane. We hope you enjoyed today's episode. Have a fantastic Monday. Good morning. Welcome to the PT on Ice Daily Show. I'm, we're rolling here on Instagram. I'm sorry I was a little bit late this morning. Uh, YouTube is not wanting to work with me. So we are rolling here on Instagram. Good morning, thanks for joining us. I'm Dr. Alexis Morgan, one of two lead faculty for clinical management of the fitness athlete. Pregnancy and postpartum, riding a big high right now. We just got finished with our first ever live course this weekend. It was hosted here in my clinic and my gym in Hendersonville, Tennessee. Day one was at Onward and we learned all about the internal exam and a lot of our clinical skills that we're using kind of in the treatment rooms. And then on day two, we got to go to the gym and really apply what we learned on day one and, and bridge that gap between the two worlds of internal pelvic floor and then at the gym. Like, what do we do when we're holding our breath? What do we do when we Valsalva and we wear a weight belt? We got to do double unders box I mean all all the things that our fitness athletes do and we got to practice that and talk about it from a pelvic health perspective oh my gosh it was so much fun so if you're looking to join us we are on the road pretty much once a month for the rest of this year and we're looking to add more um add more spots as well so if you missed this one here in Hendersonville, there's another one in September at the same clinic. Um, but we'll next month be in Greenville, South Carolina. So if you are hoping to get into this course soon, I would recommend signing up for that, especially because we are about to sell out. So sign up for it. And... Speaking of signing up, our online cohort is starting very, very soon. So this time next week, we are going to start our next cohort, our second cohort of this year. And that's our eight week online course. And so we're talking about some of those topics um, pertaining to pregnancy and postpartum within the fitness athlete. And we've just had an absolute blast with that so if you've been kind of on the fence you're not able to get to a live course hop onto this online course and get rolling with this information and then catch our live course later this year so let's talk about what is on many of our minds right now if you do crossfit you know that the crossfit open is coming up 
We talked about this on Friday. Joe talked about it on Fitness Athlete Friday. And I think it's so important to talk about it from a pelvic health perspective as well. And so it really kind of comes down to how much are we willing and able to push our bodies during the open. You know, it's it's funny because um, when when you sign your name up, and if you haven't yet, what are you waiting for? Sign up for the CrossFit Open. If you, once you've signed up and your name is on that roster and you start competing with your friends and whether that's in the gym or in our ice friends, we've got an ice group that you can follow along with and compete with us. Um, but when you toss your name in that hat, it's almost just like everything else can kind of, it just goes out the window. Right? When you get in that competition mode, that athlete mode. And we see this, you know, on the on the greater spectrum, we see this at the games. And we talk about it a lot, um, kind of in our ortho hats with like, ooh, their back was rounded out, or oh gosh, her knees valgus to, to stand up that that squat, right? And we kind of judge different movement patterns, um, which is always kind of funny to me because like I find myself doing it. Um, and then I'm like, well, I can't snatch that much weight. Like, what would my knees look like if I were trying to stand up under 200 pounds after catching it for a snatch? Like, I feel like I would probably collapse at that weight. So it's funny that we um, that we find ourselves kind of judging that. But anyway, we, we do. And we're judging kind of that movement. And the same thing happens in pelvic health. And I know it's gonna happen, it always does every single year. It's gonna happen locally in our own boxes with the open. And then it's gonna happen on a greater spectrum with the, with the semifinals. And then on, under the biggest spotlight, we're going to be talking about this again in August with the CrossFit Games. And that is people peeing in competition. So some of the movements that we are going to be seeing athletes or, or maybe ourselves, maybe we ourselves are going to be experiencing this, um, but some of those movements are going to be double unders, box jumps, heavy cleans. You might even experience if there's a mixture of some of these heavy core exercises or like rowing, we may even experience it with other, um, other exercises that are core intensive that you may not normally think of, like toes to bar or ring muscle ups, bar muscle ups. Bar muscle ups, it's, it's really hard uh, because you hit that bar right on your bladder. You, your pelvic floor has to really, really engage against all the pressures above it. And that gets really hard as a workout goes along and it gets really fatigued. And so we talk about this while we're in training and we talk about this when we're early postpartum. And the idea is when we're in training or early postpartum, like we, we are going to max out our, our, at our pelvic floor before we max out in other muscle groups. And we want to pay attention to that while we're training. We want to be able to build up our pelvic floor to where it can withstand greater and greater and greater demands throughout the season. However, when the season comes to an end and when it is like the end, the competition, the big stage, we have permission to pee. I said it. We have permission to pee. Probably we'll get a lot of flack for this. I'm here for it. <laughs> um, but our athletes are going to be pushing their bodies beyond what they generally will be pushing. If they're pregnant or if they are postpartum, it has been a while since they've pushed. And if they're choosing to push on some of these open workouts, their pelvic floor may not be where it was and it may not be able to withstand that pressure and it may cause a little bit of fatigue and we may have a little bit of leaking. And that is okay. 
no, that is not the way that we always want to squat. Or no, we don't want to pee every single time we land for every single double under. It's a sign that it's too much or it's way high of a demand for our pelvic floor. So we recognize that in normal training, we're not gonna just continually overdo it. We need to gradually get up to that point. But, in, but competition is different. And in competition, we're gonna push ourselves. We are gonna find those limits. And then many of us are gonna be pushing through those. And just like how with pain, you all are treating athletes who are gonna who who are having some kind of musculoskeletal injury. And some of those people are like, you know what? It's not worth it. Like, I don't really care about the open. I'm not gonna push it and really bug my elbow. Some are gonna say that. Others are gonna say, I don't care about my elbow. You've done a great job. Like, I'll come to you on Monday and you can help me return to this elbow thing. But right now, like, I have got to do well in the open, right? So we see those two spectrums. The same thing can be said within the pelvic floor. Some people, they're really loving where they're at in their rehab and they hate peeing on themselves. And it's really embarrassing. And they don't want to do that. That's okay. That's great. Love it. On the other end, they may be saying, I've been working my butt off to get to where I can do some double unders. I've got the skill back again. I've just been stopping myself because it's too much for my pelvic floor, but I'm going to go for it. And my, I'm going to be wearing the black leggings, I'll wear a pad, I'll bring a change of clothes, but I am going for it. And to that, we also say, okay, yeah, go for it. So I urge you all, if you're listening here today and if you're working with athletes, I urge you all to have these conversations with your clients. If you're working on that, this skill, um, if you're working on this with someone who's, who's peeing, have the conversation that if you want to push it, I know I've been kind of holding you back so that we can reach these goals. If you want to push it on these open workouts and do the best you absolutely can at that capacity, go for it. And I also caution you to, um, as far as what we're saying online, you know, we don't need to necessarily make this such a pathological thing. Yes, we can improve their performance, and yes, we can improve their muscles, but nobody died of wet pants that they peed. So let's not overreact to the pee that we're all going to be seeing during the open and during competition. Let's come alongside our athletes and help them understand that spectrum and help them understand that they can kind of come back and forth through that. Let me know what your thoughts are. If this is a bias check for you, um, you agree, maybe disagree, I'd, I'd love to hear your thoughts on here. So comment below. We'll be having a good conversation. And I hope you all have a happy Monday and do wonderful things in the open. I can't wait. See ya. Hey, thanks for tuning in to the PT on Ice Daily Show. If you enjoyed this content, head on over to iTunes and leave us a review. And be sure to check us out on Facebook and Instagram at the Institute of Clinical Excellence. If you're interested in getting plugged into more ICE content on a weekly basis while earning CEUs from home, check out our virtual ICE online mentorship program at ptonice.com. While you're there, sign up for our Hump Day Hustling newsletter for a free email every Wednesday morning with our top five research articles and social media posts that we think are worth reading. Head over to ptonice.com and scroll to the bottom of the page to sign up.